So, here we are. Good evening, everybody. I am wearing the brightest orange T-shirt in the world. Not very um, like me. Normally, all my T-shirts are black. I put this on before, actually. It completely freaked the camera out so that everything went green. Um, I fixed it. It's not green. It should uh, should look <laughs> look very orange. Um, so, good evening. Massive shout-out to those watching on the replay. Shout-out to those who are listening on the Ads on This TV audio experience on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher or wherever else you get your podcasts from. Um, doing something very different tonight. This is something that I've not done in a while. I've just said in the intro before I actually went live live and um, not done it in a while because I've not produced a vlog um, for quite some time so those who've been around us on this for a while will know last year 2018 I started vlogging on a weekly basis me and my cameraman like partner in crime Petch um, we did an episode every single week we did like 49 episodes um, last year but then there was quite a few crazy things happened over new year Petch unfortunately lost his mum his mum passed away. Um, I was moving into this new apartment. Everything just kind of went completely up in the air and we stopped vlogging. So um, it was something that we thought, right, you know what, we're going to regroup and we're going to start vlogging again. And that's what we did this week and got a great mate of mine and a brilliant, brilliant actor on the vlog this week, Danny Miller, Emmerdale's Danny Miller. You'll know him as Aaron Dingle from Emmerdale. Now, a lot of his fans are watching tonight, so shout out to you. Um, and I brought Danny here on Friday night, just gone, and we recorded a vlog episode and a podcast for actsonthis.tv. If you're not a member of actsonthis.tv and you're an actor particularly, um, you're going to want to go over to the website and grab yourself a membership, actsonthis.tv. You'll literally find on here interviews with some of the most successful casting directors, actors, writers, producers, directors, um, just freaking super influential, successful people um, in the acting industry. You'll find some other Emmerdale people, you Emmerdale fans. Uh, there's Asan Jai, plays Ellis um, in Emmerdale. He's been in here. Um, but yeah, lots of uh, lots of incredible info, particularly if you're an actor and you want to get further in your acting career faster. Um, tonight, after the uh, well, like this, the premiere of this um, of this new vlog with Danny, um, I'm going to launch and I'm going to set live the podcast um, on Acts on This TV. Um, so at around about ten o'clock tonight, or just before, you're going to be able to get access to the full podcast. You're going to see bits of it in this vlog. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think you're going to enjoy it. We get like really, really deep on some topics in Danny's life. Um, he opens up an awful lot about what, what the reality of you know being a regular in now the nation's favourite soap. And um, we talk a lot about mental health, um, a lot about some struggles Danny's had around uh, mental health in the past. Um, depression in the past and that's the thing you see you, you think a lot of you know actors who are super successful um, suddenly you know the perception can be that suddenly you know they, they have no problems their problems all go away uh, that isn't the case at all you know we know that um, everybody you know needs to look after their mental health regardless of what you're doing I think it's a conversation we all need to be having more as much as we you know we talk about physical health and going to the gym um, we really need to talk more about mental health and how we can look after that so we touch on that here as well you're going to see in this vlog um, a few clips uh, of the podcast. But if you want to get access to the full thing, it was an hour and a half, just over 90 minutes. Um, that's on this .tv later on tonight, and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to get access to that just before 10 o'clock. So I'm going to check the comments, and then we uh, are going to begin. I can see Jill Myers is, is here. Bernie Russell's in the house. Meg Burley's now here as well. Peter Revel Walsh has just joined. Um, thanks for joining us. And again, shout out to everyone on Twitter whose comments I can't see. So I'm going to play this vlog. It's um, 30 minutes long, guys, just under 30 minutes long. You're going to see some updates from me and Petch to begin with. Um, then it goes into uh, Danny coming round, and then you're going to hear a few clips from the podcast, and we will uh, we will recap on it all um, after that. I'll jump back on camera, and we'll uh, and we'll wrap up. So enjoy this. I can still see your comments on Facebook whilst this is playing. Um, I'll nip over to Twitter while this is playing as well, see what people are saying. Um, but enjoy it, and I will be back in just over 29 minutes. See you soon. Of course, I was depressed. Like, of course, I was depressed. I was just. I was a young lad in a television programme who ignored all the personal stuff that was going on. everybody to episode 49 of Watch Ross, the one where we sit down for a chat with Emmerdale's Danny Miller. Yes, 
yes, we are back. We are vlogging again. You just caught us shooting a little bit of micro content there for Facebook and Twitter, all around the theme actually of not giving up, right? So many actors get in touch with me through Acts on This. Email me if you want, ross at and they're like, Ross, I'm trying everything. I'm doing everything I'm, I'm being told to do and nothing's popping in my acting career. Nothing's happening. I'm not getting any auditions. I'm not booking any jobs. Is it time for me to give up? And I'm like, look, you don't need to ask me permission whether to carry on or not, or whether to give up or whatever. You only need permission from yourself. I'm always going to tell you to carry on a lot of the time. Um, you never know how close you are to that breakthrough, right? If you really want to do this, don't give up. In fact, Petch, put this two minute thing we just shot in. Um, this is my two minutes on not giving up. Is it time for me to give up? A question I get asked by actors a dozen times a week or more, and I totally get it, right? You're at that point where you feel enough is enough. You can't take it. You're tired. The opposition and the obstacles in your way have finally worn you down. I've been there myself, and if any actor watching this says they haven't, they are lying. So what's the answer? It's not a straightforward yes or no, but asking yourself these three questions will give you more clarity. One, why did you pursue acting in the first place? right you had a good reason for committing to this goal initially what was it what things did you want to get from this industry odds are you still want those things as much as you did before if you push through the discomfort you're feeling right now and eventually acquire those things will it have all been worth it two what's the worst that will happen if you keep going and don't reach your goal honestly what are you afraid of for most people it's being judged a failure by other people around them what if I put in another 10 years and still don't make it you need to value your own opinion of yourself above the combined opinion of everyone else if you don't keep going you'll never know how far you could have gone and you'll miss out on being the person you'd become through the sheer effort of carrying on Three, what would you tell someone else in your shoes? Would you tell your talented best friend to throw the towel in or would you help them see in their amazing potential and their one and only stab at this thing that we call life? As cheesy as it sounds, you need to be your own best friend right now. You, more than anyone in the world, deserve your belief and motivation. So if you answer these three questions honestly and still feel resolute about the decision to give up, you have my blessing to abandon your goal. But please remember, you are gonna die. Unlike an act gig there are no rehearsals here you will wake up and be 92 one day and it will be too late to do this so don't die with regret in my own career I'll give up when I am where I want to be and not a second before Share that as well, by the way. It's probably going to be on at, at on this is Twitter. So get over there, share that. Um, I bet you thought we would we would probably given up on this vlog or we were going to give up on it. We've not put an episode out since December. It's now March. There's good reasons for that. To be honest, some a load of crazy shit's gone down in all of our lives, both personally, professionally. We're back on it now. All is well, all is good in the world. Um, and you will be seeing a vlog every other week from us now. So make sure you still subscribe to this on YouTube and Facebook and everything like that. Um, don't, don't give up on us, <laughs> all right? We haven't given up on you. Um, remember when you did, actually, Petch, you were contemplating on the vlog about giving up. No. He's shaking his head, right? I saw this before, episode 19. When do you give up? Chasing the dream and oh, just God. leave it as a dream. When should a dream just be left a dream? Um, never patch. You pursued it. He didn't give up. He's been doing some great things, right? He's just committed to doing a new play for the Greater Manchester Fringe that you can see in July. Give us more details of that soon, Petch. Um, and also, the main thing that I've seen you doing is you've been creating your own content with another actress called Lucinda Sinclair. Shout out to you, Lucy. Um, and they've been putting their, their like own content out, little scenes. Um, and they're creating a little series called T One Sugar. Petch, I'll even let you put the intro in. Boom! If you want to see what that's all about, get over to Petch's personal Twitter, at Lee Petcher, follow him, retweet it, like, comment on it, share it, maybe you'll be in it, support him, it's important. Um, uh, what else? I haven't given up on getting a job, right? This is something interesting I'll let you in on. A uh, little bit of my own personal process. Every Monday, I send two emails out. One to someone I want to reconnect with in the acting industry who I've met before. One to someone I've never met before and I want to connect with for the first time. Um, over the last six or eight months, they've generally been casting directors that I've wanted to reconnect with. One person in particular, 
I know I've been pecking his head. Um, I've been persistent. Is the casting director Andy Pryor, who I love to bits, what an absolute legend, one of the most legit casting directors in this industry. And I've been like, Andy, I really could do the job. Um, I've not just been doing that. I've been sending like, you know, relevant stuff and updates on my showreel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the guy helped me out and indeed saw me and got me a role in a brand new BBC drama I just shot a couple of weeks ago. It's called Years and Years. It's written by Russell T Davis. It's a family saga. Those family sagas often travel through time, like through World War II or through the 20s. This one goes into the future. It starts in 2019 and goes forward 15 years. It stars people like Emma Thompson, our good friend Ruth Maidley's in it, and some great actors and actresses, Jessica Hines, obviously it's awesome people, Russell Tovey. Um, really, really cool. I play a guy called Billy Fritz, two episodes of that, gonna be out later this year, look out for that. And uh, the final thing we'll talk about not giving up Petch in this section of the vlog, is we haven't given up on one actor who we've wanted to get on Acts On This.TV for quite a while, a good friend of ours, Danny Miller. Okay, he's a busy man, he's hard to track down, but we haven't given up on getting Danny back on the vlog and in the studio to record a podcast for Acts On This.TV. He's a guy who's been in the industry so long, you'll know him as Aaron Dingle. Um, from Emmerdale, he had a little stint in Scott and Bailey for a while. He left the show of Emmerdale, he came back into it. Um, but I'm sure there's been loads of times he's wanted to give up. And he's got, he's got like awards coming out of his ears. The amount of soap awards and best actor awards that guy's won is just absolutely insane. And so I've invited Danny round to the apartment tomorrow night. It's Tuesday as we're shooting this. We're going to be interviewing Danny on Wednesday, a night when Petch is abandoning us. Are you giving up on us tomorrow night? No. He is. He's giving up on us. For his girlfriend, Emma, shout out to you. Um, it's fine, it's for Emma. If it's for anyone else, I would just be like, Petch, dump them, dump them. Don't give, give up on them, not us. Not you, Emma, joking. Um, so I'm gonna be filming it. I don't know what it's gonna be like. Basically, if all goes to plan, I think the next shot you're gonna see is gonna be Danny, probably behind me in the kitchen, making himself a latte on the wonderful Nespresso machine. What do you think the odds of that are, Petch? 100 to one. 100 to one. I will take your 100 quid, Petch. Um, I've got an act on this mug, by the way. Um, and yeah, I will, uh, I will look forward to um, paying that into my bank. Have you got under quid on you? Yeah? Have you paid me under quid? No, I will take it out of his wages. Hopefully, you'll see Danny in two seconds. <laughs> hey. And we are on. Danny is here. Danny, welcome to the vlog. Technically, well, I'm calling the, the bet null and void patch. Technically, we got the shots we needed. We just got Danny making a brew like I said we would. However, I didn't film it. Petch is filming it because Petch is here. We've rescheduled the podcast yeah. two days like forward, pushed it forward, so we can all be together. <laughs> there you go. Um, welcome. How are you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Thanks for having me. Are you excited about this? Absolutely. Look how excited he is. Um, I've got an Acts On This mug again, by the way. Uh, if you want one of these, let me know. Might get a special run printed for a price. Other mugs are available because I work for ITV. No, other mugs are not available. Can you get some ITV mugs? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, we did a podcast five years ago. Five years? It's five years. Um, we've got a lot of catching up to do. It's so old, actually, that podcast isn't on AtsOnThis.tv anymore. Um, if you want to get access to this podcast, it's going to be available on AtsOnThis.tv. If this vlog's out, it's on the site right now. Go over, join up. Tell them, Danny, join up. Do it now. Do it now. Right. Um, are you ready for this? Absolutely. Let's do it. He's ready. I'm ready. Pets, you ready? Yep. To the office. Where do you want to start, like, catching up, man? I mean, do, I mean, do you want to talk about the decision to return to Emmerdale after Scott and Bailey and stuff? I mean, what that was all about? Yeah, let's, let's just imagine that's a good good place to start. It's where we left off. So talk yeah. us through that 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 period of your of your life, man. Well, um, I think first and foremost, I was um, I was very I was a very nervous person back then. I, I still I think everybody deep down suffers with a little bit of anxiety. It's just whether or not you choose to um, ignore it or acknowledge it um, yeah, yeah and at that time i was i was ignoring it I was, whereas now i can acknowledge it and um control it a little bit but um scott and bailey for me was a real eye-opener uh, as to how how serious the business was when you're in a soap like emmerdale uh, or you know any of the other ones it becomes your everyday job and yeah. it's the same as everybody they clock in in the morning you're clocking out in the evening and people have the friends there, the groups there, they have people that they just like and get along with, you have people they're not necessarily going to ever gel with. So, you know, it's a very much a good morning thing. Yeah. But you're very much industrialised in it and you and and 
it becomes your your life. Um, so therefore, it becomes almost like a cliche of a second family. Right. And the reason I say that is because it's so annoying when people say that. Lorraine says it a lot. God bless her. But yeah. it's um, the reason that I say that is, is because it is. You sometimes see a lot more of your co-star than you would your own mum or your own dad because it's seven till seven, it's Monday to Friday, therefore you're with them and it's an intense thing. And it, you know what? Even if someone just comes in like to, to serial drama as like a day player man, yeah. it instantly feels like a family. It's mm. like it's got that real kind of close-knit vibe and yeah. like everyone instantly looks after you. Yeah, and a, a lot of guest actors in the show as well sort of say that, but for us, we, we always like, especially me, you know, being going into a family like it was with Scott and Bailey, that they were so familiarised with each other. Yeah, it was other. already established. Exactly, and I was a new lad going in, and I was a new lad going in to play the boss. Yeah, yeah, man, I love it. I know, which was just like you know, it was unbelievable in a way because I was kind of going. So they want me to play Scott and Bailey's boss. Are you? Are you sure? And like, a, yeah. is someone winding me up? Because it just felt so young and so, um, so inexperienced. What, what were you? Twenty two. Um, yeah, it had been about twenty two, twenty three. Um, it was about a year or so after I left Emmerdale. Uh, and I remember going for the audition and, and him saying, yeah, you know, you're the sergeant. And I was kind of listening to him and, and I just sort of brushed over that. And um, carry, he carried on talking. And then I said, sorry, you just go back to sergeant. And I said, so that, what What do you mean that's, so that would make me their boss? And he goes, yeah. And I go, holy what? shit. So yeah. Jones and Leslie Sharp's boss. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm already intimidated in a way because they are two very powerful willi- uh, ladies, women with, this uh, going along with Amelia Woolmore, who who ended up writing the final series as well. Yeah, um, it was just amazing. So it was intimidating, you know. It was a powerful set almost, and they had um, Pipe were in there as well, and it was it was intimidating. So for me, I felt completely new to it all, and like I felt like I shouldn't be there. I felt like a fraud because wow. because I'd never I'd never trained for it. You know, I'd never I'd never been to a drama school. I'd never had that experience. I'd I'd, I'd got the job at seventeen at Emmerdale. And I had four great years there. And then I decided I wanted to spread my wings into this business that everybody within Emmerdale talked about. And when I sort of spread my wings and went out there and, and took a dive into the big deep sea, which and that's what it is. It is it's deep. huge and it's and it's it's intimidating. And I went out with a profile, if you will. A lot of people are still there without a profile that are still trying to make that. So I knew that I was always going to be a, a little step ahead, whether I took that for granted or not, I don't know. But I can remember that I, I messed up so many auditions because I couldn't control my anxiety. And what I did do was I, I sort of took myself out of the situation and evaluated it and thought, it's the same as anything. You're selling a product effectively. You're saying, I'm the best person for this job and I, I want you to hire me. And if they think that somebody else is better for the job, then fine. And that's how I started to control myself with it. Financially, it was sort of a decision that I made that I wanted to go back anyway. And yeah. it just so happened that Lucy Padgett, who plays my mum in the show, um, was kind of very, um, she was, you know, she was great at, at sort of almost being that agent, you know, the go-between between the producer, Kate at the time, and and myself, and sort of dropping it on a night out. Uh, when someone's leaving, I think it was, and, and Lucy sort of said, oh, apparently Danny wants to come back. And then they got in touch with uh, my agent, and it all became possible, and it moved very quickly. Yeah. And I was just made up, and then, Six months back into it, I was like, why did I ever leave? Go to IMDb, mate. You've recorded 1,170 episodes wow. of Emmerdale. 1,170 <laughs> eps. Wow. Um, what is, right, what is the reality of that in terms of how do you keep things fresh? How do you stay alive, like, creatively? And how do you ensure you continue to up your game when you're in a show for such a long run? How do you not get complacent or, you know, take things for granted and not really put a performance in on days you might not feel like it? I mean, because you do. Like, you always yeah. bring it. Well, the thing is, it moves so quickly, so you'll find yourself... So, just to give an insight to anybody that wouldn't know, it's it's 12 episodes that... Well, let's say now it's seven episodes a week that we do, so it's more things like... It turns out it can be 15 and then... 14 at some points and this even confuses me and i'm in the system right. so i don't actually know how it works but there's episodes being filmed at the time so they all overlap each other so as you come into the end of one block as they call so the 12 episodes four four episodes each for three different directors which means that you've your 12 episodes is covering uh you know your three or four weeks of of coverage on tv um and each one is then overlapped by another three. So another three directors then take it. So you might find that you're overlapped and you're starting a new story, but then next week you're finishing off the story that you were doing that's on two weeks prior to it, which is why it becomes so quick and so confusing. 
that you sometimes don't know where you are. So most most casts keep all of their episodes for the two blocks together, so that they know where they've been, and it's not it's not your mind playing games with you. It's nece- it's it's just how it is, which is that's where I've been, that's where I'm going, so I know I can play this like this. Yep, so it's I, all shot out, and of, I can justify out of chronological it. order. Yeah, absolutely. So because of that, you find yourself living two by two weeks. So before you know it, weekend, week, weekend, and then you go, no wonder we're halfway through March because you live in your life like that. So for us, it doesn't necessarily give you a chance to do it. I think it's very telling for somebody who's just who's just literally, you know, phoning it in and, and not really bothering. And they don't last long. Yeah. Because they know that either they're gonna they're gonna say I've had enough or the bosses are gonna go, Listen, this is a great job. You should be much more grateful for it. You look like you're not interested, so here's a storyline and that seems and you're you in the out. back of a taxi. And rightly so, because yeah. like you say, there's so many people out there that want that opportunity to be, you know, in, in, in the situation that I'm in, which is on a on a great show and the number one soap if you know if you will now. Yeah, yeah. Um so, you know, it, it's there's there's so many people out there that want that opportunity. So if you don't want it and you don't like it, move over, let the new person in. But then there was loads of things that happened in my life that, you know, are far too deep to go into now that makes makes you just you know kind of think of course I was depressed like of course I was depressed I was just I was a young lad in a television program who ignored all the personal stuff that was going on and you know like first proper breakup with your first proper girlfriend and all that oh, kind it's of the stuff. worst man it's, it's, it's worst awful mate awful and, and well you know yourself every I'm sure everybody's been through it heartbreak is the worst it I is. mean like literally just the worst I mean you know, I lost a little bit of weight, and that was probably the only silver line I could find. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, there's so many sort of things out there that, you know, I think people choose to ignore. Whether they choose to ignore it for their own way of dealing with it, I'd always say now, knowing what I've known from my small, and I'm only 28, but from the life experience that I've had from leaving school to now, that there's so many things out there that that kind of make you, I don't know, makes you make make it'll make you you make you angry or it'll make you hate life or whatever. But for me, it was always something that I was thinking I'm just going to deal with the problem head on, and whatever comes out of it comes out of it. But the depression and the anxiety of things was making me go, I'm not dealing with this well because I don't know what I'm doing and mm-hmm. I don't know who I am. And all the time, my family, and it runs in the family, you know, my relatives are on antidepressants and um, they say you need to get to the doctors, but being a bloke. Don't want to do it. I'm all right. I don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got there and the doctor asked me about three or four questions on this A&D, anxiety and depression questionnaire. And I think I got halfway through it and he went, are they honest answers? And I said, yeah. He went, don't even bother with that test. He went, "You, you you need to help. And he did, and he, he had given me help, and it took about six weeks, seven weeks, and I was like, these these pills are bollocks, man. Eight weeks in, and I was like, okay. I f- I'm starting to feel like I want to go out of the house again. I'm starting to feel right. like, you know, I can go for a drink, and I'm not going to get myself into trouble because someone's going to say something, and my anxiety will go attack, attack, attack. So whether that be physical or verbally, you know, it, it was always something that I was afraid of. And now I just think going back to posting the videos on Instagram, that because of that anxiety and depression, because I dealt with it, because I talked about it, and I was never as deep in it with as Joe was, um, that I ever had suicidal thoughts or anything, but I was very much I was very much aware that I wasn't myself. Yeah. So when I dealt with the problem head on and I went, guys, I'm not I'm not doing good. I need some help. Everyone went, Great. Let's get you to your doctors. Let's blah, blah, blah. before you know it, you suddenly start to become yourself again because you're going Ah, oh, right. So the reason I was suffering with anxiety was because, and I mean, sometimes I'd be on set and I'd just break out in sweat, which makes you then even more anxious yep. into a point like where a you nearly loop, get, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then it had it, it puts you sort of head on towards um, a um, it puts you onto a panic attack. So then when I was dealing with it, I wasn't dealing with it because people were going, "What's up with you?" So then I was going, "I don't know." You know, I wasn't on the antidepressants. Was it my thyroid? Am I overactive thyroid? I've got this, this, and this. And it basically, it was just me not dealing with the problem. It was me not dealing with it. And what I was, what I do now is if I get anxious, I, s- I tell people and I suddenly go, I feel a bit anxious. And people go, it's all right, what are you anxious about? And you, the more you're open, the more you're honest, people go, yeah, what are you anxious about? You're fine, it's, it's okay. And you go, 
oh yeah, okay, sound, yeah, I can feel my legs on the floor, I can feel my body, I'm all right, I'm here, I feel real, great, let's crack on. But instead I was going, oh God, I'm going to panic, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone, minute, worse, worse, sweat. Right, stand by for a take, an action, I can't, I'm sorry, what's up, I'm sweating, I'm really sorry, I can't. Whereas I dealt with the anxiety and depression and because I wasn't blocking that out anymore and I was telling people, it's okay, I'm just a bit, I'm a bit hot and sweaty because I'm anxious, my hands are clammy because I'm anxious, I'm sorry, it's just the way that my mind deals with it, it's the way my body deals with it and it's fine, people go, alright, no worries, take your time and then your brain suddenly goes, I'm okay. Boom, there you go, you've just seen two or three clips, I don't know what I'm going to edit in yet, um, of Danny, what was probably, literally, it's probably the deep, deepest chat we've had on a on a podcast how was it for you amazing yeah um i think i've ne I usually do interviews with people that i've never met before so you don't kind of open up to them but yeah i think you know it, I, I always want to be as honest as i can to help people in whatever way they can whether it be audition uh, auditioning acting whether it's the mental health something that you know i can relate to and, and if i can help people with it then uh, i want to be as open as i can Awesome. We did talk like God, like literally about everything. Don't know how long that podcast is going to be. Um, go to atsonlist.tv, get your membership. You get a free trial if you want atsonlist.tv forward slash seven days. Get access to that. Listen to the whole thing. Um, yeah, the theme of today's vlog, Danny, is and we touched on this a lot in the in in the podcast is not giving up. Right? I have definitely at times in my career. I'm sure every every freaking actor out there has asked himself this question at some point in their career. Am I doing the right thing? following this path is that you know am i actually bringing like extra stress into my life um you know whether that's you know people dealing with anxiety not feeling good enough depression whatever into their life by following this career that's so full of rejection until i get to that place that i want to get it's so full of doubt uncertainty all of these things that just make us you know not feel enough um you must ask yourself that question at some point you know am i doing the right thing you know have you ever what is it give up yourself just expand man yeah, um, you know, I think we touched on it a little bit in the in the, in the podcast that, you know, uh, there was there was a time when I just thought oh, I can't be bothered with this. I wasn't necessarily getting many good auditions. I'm sure there'll be a lot of actors of all ages starting out at various different ages, and whatever stage they're at, at their career and 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 trying to achieve their dreams of television work, theatre work, film work, whatever. You know, there's always going to be a point where you go, actually, do you know what? There's so many people that are trying to achieve this. Um, I may as well just give up. It's too big of a fish. Uh, too big. I'm too small of a fish. Long day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a big. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big pond, and you're a tiny fish among so many other fish. And so many people give up, and you find them going. You know, you might see them later on on a on a crew and say, uh, "I wanted to be an actor, but it was too hard, so um, I made up." and just I'm, I'm in props now and you know it's equally as just as good a job i think in especially in the television world but you know they did it because they couldn't they didn't want to do it and they gave up and you know i, I think not everybody in the crews like i've worked with are, are, are like that but you know what they've in a way they've not given up because although they, they they might not be perfect for being in front of camera whether that's sort of you know they've got on-screen chemistry with people or you know an on-screen uh, presence then you know it, it, people give up for their own reasons or whatever but that doesn't necessarily mean that you've given up and that's not the dream because you can tell they've gone into it and they're still in television they're still wanting to make television and and be creative in that way just not necessarily in front of the screen what's what's got you through at times where you've wanted to give up and you've spoken a bit about you know today you've been really vulnerable and you've spoken about times where you've not been feeling your best you know mindset psychology mental health what what gets you through as an actor and as a human being through those times of adversity I think, I think, well, I think first and foremost, it's having the confidence in yourself and knowing that, you know, everybody has limits and, and, and everybody's, you know, body and, or mind gives up in some sense because they kind of go, look, this is your limit. This is where you're at any further above it. And you're going to be uncomfortable. And that's, I think, believe is that's, that's anxiety. And that's how, how people access the good anxiety or bad anxiety. And I choose now to access the good anxiety and use it for the good as opposed to the bad. And there's always going to be that, you know, I've had opportunities, you know, to, to do various different TV shows off the back of Emmerdale and other TV shows, not necessarily that's involved with Emmerdale, but more so for my own personality or whatever you want to class it as. Yeah. Um, and I thought to myself going down to them, you know, this morning interviews for six minutes of TV, do I really need this anxiety? Do I really need to do this? Well, the fact is, is yeah, because it's your job and that camera there is, is filming us talking here and 
that's what that's what the job I'm in. That's my line of work. So I'll just get on with it and enjoy it for what it is. Find the good parts of it. Find the positive positivities as a part as opposed from just sort of going. This is going to go all wrong. I hope I don't swear. I hope I don't do this. Just enjoy it. And you know, obviously, it's not great to swear on daytime TV, but <laughs> you know, it's not like you you're taking a swing at Phil or Holly, is it? You know, yeah. you just you just you've said the wrong thing and it'll pass. Well, you go. Do you know what's really interesting? What what you said there that will kind of kind of end on this. You talk about good anxiety, bad anxiety. Physiology-wise, right? Physically, the, the 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 emotions and the and the feelings and the the physiology your body goes through when you are feeling anxious, um, you know, sweaty palms, raised heart level, you know, feeling of of excitement, you know, all, all of these, uh, you know, these these really kind of uh, strong emotions that your body makes you feel, and you want to kind of run away from that situation. They're exactly the same things that we feel when we're, we're super happy and excited about something. The only difference is how your brain is actually framing those things you feel it. The physiology wise is exactly the same. When you get excited, you get sweaty palms, your heart rate, right? You know, rises up. It's just how you kind of look at it. So you're right in terms of you channel that anxiety and go, actually, it's not anxiety. This is excitement. And this is me getting uncomfortable. And this is me, you know, growing and something good's going to come of this or, Oh my God, there's anxiety. All right. Okay. I'm going to run away. Um, it's interesting, yeah, how you frame it as a human being. Petch, you want to come round the back of the, from the back of the camera? He's been off camera for a bit, this guy. We've not been doing a vlog for a while. What do you want to say about this, Petch, to finish up on? Well, first, um, I want to say thank you for just how open and honest you were in that podcast there, guys. It's amazing. You're going to love it. Um, I was like you on this vlog. I felt really anxious. Like then when you, you call me around to be in front of the camera and stuff, I remember being really anxious and being really worried and scared about what I was going to say, fear of looking like an idiot, which would make me not want to say things. Do you remember? Yeah, absolutely. I was really like intimidated by you and Hop and the guests that that we had on and things. It was just it's surreal and for you to be able to be that honest and open about it and just, just share what you went through is, I think, more needs to be said about mental health. It's not a taboo subject. Uh, so thank you for that. We're back on this vlog every couple of weeks now. Uh, we'll be back for episode 50 some point very, very soon. Danny, you've been on the blog twice now. You know the catchphrase at the end, don't you? Yeah, my dad does. His dad does not Vince, shout out to you, legend. Um, go back and watch, oh, I don't know what episode it was, where we had Danny, Danny and his dad Vince on. What a guy. Um, so, yeah, I hope this has been enjoyable. Tweet it. Tweet us. Social media details up on the screen right now. Let us know on Instagram what you think. Just, you know, freaking spread the word, please. Love to you all in three, two, one. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs>。Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. You ready? Are we on, Petch? We are on. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, we are vlogging again. Um, oh. <laughs> One more time, Petch. We got this. We got this. Always like to put a little bit of an outtake in at the end there because it all looks so smooth on the actual vlog and actually the reality of shooting a vlog is nothing like that whatsoever. Um, that was like the quickest half an hour ever. Um, I watched that vlog back um, with you guys as well. I obviously edited it and put it together and created it, but it's still super, super interesting every time I watch it. And I want to thank Danny again for being so open and honest and vulnerable in that podcast. You only saw like such a little clip of it there. Um, if you go over, I've literally just made the podcast live. Now, if you go to ads on this dot TV and just click on what's new in the section at the top here, You'll see uh, I've just put the uh, the podcast live now, Developing Mental Toughness with Emmerdale's Danny Miller. You can listen to a uh, like a 10-minute preview of it if you're not a member of AtsOnThis.tv. Um, if you want to listen to the full thing, um, if you're a member, click on Members at the top so you want to join. Um, click into your premium membership and you will see it in this podcast section here, second one down, the red one. You'll see it right at the top there, Developing Mental Toughness with Emmerdale's Danny Miller. 
and the full podcast, uh, the purple one there, is in your members' area, basically. Um, but, God, we talk about so much um, in that podcast. Some of the points there said, so like, why Danny chose to leave MNL in 2013 and his journey back in the soap a year later, the reality and risks of leaving regular acting work, how Danny... Um, first got into Emmerdale over a decade ago, how he ended up on a lad's, quite interesting story, how he ended up on a lad's holiday the day before his big audition, um, the route Danny would take in the industry now, like if he was just starting over again today, um, how Danny attacks a script and the uh, and the tragedy actually in his life that led him to, uh, well, like an emotional breakthrough in his work, a, a way of accessing emotions he'd never experienced before in order to take his work to the next level, why he prefers not to rehearse his big scenes, so the big emotional scenes, doesn't want to rehearse them, um, why you must get over other people's judgment um, and utilize social media to distribute your own acting work if you, uh, you're an actor in particular. Um, why Danny likes to put out original content on Instagram, which he does all the time. Follow him, Danny underscore B underscore Miller on Instagram. Puts out some hilarious stuff. Very, very funny guy as well. Uh, why we should all start talking more about mental health and mindset. Heard a bit of it in that uh, little preview you saw there. Danny struggles with depression and mental health. Why acknowledging your anxiety helps you control it. Why it's critical um, you learn everything around self-employment and tax if you're an actor that was something that really stung Danny in the early days um, and Danny's top life uh, lessons and um, so that's on this TV get yourself over there and um, get yourself a pre-membership listen to the whole thing and obviously hundreds of other podcasts that are on there hundreds of hours worth uh, of other podcasts that are on there um, but yeah that got that flew by um, let me know what your thoughts were. Let me know if you've experienced similar stuff. Let me know if you've ever, um, you know, if, if, if you, maybe you struggle with anxiety, you struggle with, you know, not feeling your best right now in the industry, out of the industry, and you've just never spoken about it before. Um, it's just time to talk about stuff like this. It just is, like Pet said at the end there, like it shouldn't be like this taboo thing. We talk about physical health all the time. Talk about going to the gym all the time, working out all the time, physically, taking things that make you feel physically, you know, better. But no one really talks about um, their mind, their psychology, and it's everything, in my opinion, literally, is absolutely everything. It's the foundation that you build any kind of success in your life upon. I don't think, I think if you, you know, you've got to start with that, basically. If you don't um, have you know, your psychology and decent, a decent mindset, you're, um, you're going to struggle like to, to achieve anything in your life, not just your acting career, but literally just like <laughs> life's tough enough. Um, on its own, Bobby's here. He says late, apologies for my lateness, massive shirtless scene prep. So Bobby's acting a shirtless scene. He says, you've got to work out twice a day this week. <laughs> there you go, Bobby, again, physical, physical health. Um, Hopefully you're working out your mind twice a day um, as well, Bobby. Um, but yeah, interesting. Um, and we're back vlogging now, so I'm going to have another vlog out. Petch is actually off this week, but next week we're going to vlog again. I've um, got a couple of uh, podcasts coming up on AnswerThis.tv with some casting directors um, and also a really, really top bloke, great actor who's working with Idris Elba at the moment, um, starring opposite him, uh, opposite him in the second series of something called In the Long Run, a guy called Jimmy Akambola. Can have him on the podcast soon as well. Um, and then I'm going to start doing round tables. I've just bought a whole load of new kit. So I'm going to start um, actually sitting down with, with three people like from the same program. I'm going to do a cast, fingers crossed, the first one. I'm not going to tell you actually the first one um, in case it doesn't come off, but I'm going to have like two of my heroes on it, man, um, which would be really cool. And then, uh, yeah, it's going to be a regular thing. So rather than being just one-to-one -one interviews, they're going to be more like conversations. So I'll just set the topic and the people... Um, you know, who are joining me will, you know, they'll just converse effectively, uh, which I think will be pretty, uh, will be pretty sweet. Mix it up a little bit. Uh, Bobby says, anxiety and depression were huge problems for me in my teens and early 20s. I'd had five suicidal spells. Wow. By the time I was 22, I had a pretty bad one in late 2017 when I was going through a quiet period. And yes, I was listening to your podcast while working out. But nice one, Bobby. <laughs> Work, we'll listen to the podcast and you'll never feel bad again. Late to the party. Dougal, man. You've missed the whole freaking thing. Dougal Ram, the legend in the house. Watch um, watch the replay, Dougal. I've also just put it out on... Um, so the podcast with Danny, uh, like I said, is now available here on AtsOnThis.tv. That's in your members area for anyone who's a premium member. The vlog you just watched, obviously you can watch the replay of this. Um, but if you go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross, I've literally just published the full um, vlog to... Uh, 
to YouTube as well. It's there, the green little green thumbnail, episode 49. Um, and there's Danny. Um, so yeah, that's on there as well. So anyone watching on Twitter, I know Danny's fans like to rip stuff. Just rip it off. Uh, rip it off YouTube. Do what you want with it. You have my permission to um, use what we shot however you want. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Share and share alike, yeah? It's an important topic. You should be talking about it more. Um, catch the rest later, Dougal. Definitely, man. But don't miss out on the podcast. Honestly, 90 minutes of just super honest chat with Danny. Um, some great insight on what it's like working, you know, regularly in a, in a well, literally the nation's number one soap right now. It's been voted three years on the trot of the British, at the NTAs, is it? Or the British Soap Awards? Can't remember. Um, the realities of that, yeah. And, uh, and the good and the bad. You know, and and what you should be prepared for if you ever find yourself in that situation, because you know there's not really like a school or even a drama school or acting class that teaches you actually the realities of what it's like when you actually become a regular in something, and the practicalities of stuff like Danny was saying, you know, about tax and being self-employed and VAT um, and all these things that you're just expected to know. Um, it's interesting. It's really interesting the things that can uh, that can ca- you know catch you out. Um, Dougal says definitely we'll watch it watch it Dougal um, so that's kind of it I mean you know we're finishing a little bit early tonight I'll let you go and listen to the podcast everybody um, has anyone got anything I can do for them anybody need any help with anything um, we've got a few minutes for some Q&A if you want um, let me know what's going what's going on what's going down in your life in your acting career out of it can I help you with anything at all um, I'll give people a few uh, a few seconds to type anything. If you need anything, if you need me help promoting anything for you, and uh, tweet at at on this TV. Let me know what it is. Um, more than happy to kind of retweet it and help you get it out there. Um, come and join the Facebook group if you're new to this and you're watching for the first time tonight. You don't know what ads on this is. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash ads on this TV. Um, join the Facebook group and those who are premium members, you've got a private group obviously within the main ads on this TV website as well. If you need any help, you know, you know maybe the questions you're asking are a bit sensitive. You wouldn't want to put them publicly out on Facebook jump into the super private group within the website nobody can ever see that unless they're a premium member of acts on this that's another place you can you know you can get help Sharon says i'm looking for a a podcaster to interview me sharon there's there's oh, try to think i mean what what on on what what do you want what do you want to be in what do you want to be interviewed about what and what's what's the goal for it basically um because what you what you should do yeah is, i mean depends what you want whether it's acting related or something completely different different um you want to just get on iTunes, search for the topic that your podcast, you know, the topic that you want to talk about. And then and then what you've got to do effectively is just reach out and just offer to add massive value. And that's the thing. Um, it's difficult, basically, uh, unless you want to bribe them. <laughs> bribe them with cash, Sharon. I would love to get on Lewis Howe's podcast, but my audience is just not big enough um, right now. He does something called the School of Greatness. I'm sure a lot of people on here I've, uh, I've heard of it or listened to it. He interviews, um, nothing to do with acting, he just interviews really great people from all walks of life, musicians, scientists, sports people, a couple of actors, social uh, media, you know, like people, entrepreneurs, businessmen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's difficult. He will just get so many requests to go with Lewis because he literally gets like 2 million downloads a week. Um, Lewis, can I come on your podcast? He'll be like, um, what are you offering me? Well, Lewis, I can't offer you a lot, mate, to be honest, bar friendship don't have itunes i'm an android girl oh okay we'll get on um yeah because i mean itunes is uh is huge for podcasts i mean just go on spotify then or uh, you get that on android or stitcher.com i mean ultimately just just google you know whatever the topic is you want to talk about and then podcast um and and yeah and then get a get a little sort of pitch together in terms of what you could offer not money wise, you don't have to be money, you know, what you could offer that person to uh you know, to have you on as a guest. If they're a big influencer, that is, you know, and you obviously want to expand your reach for whatever you're doing, um, then yeah, I guess you've got to bring something to the table. But podcasting is only gonna get bigger and bigger now, I reckon, because people just wanna do multiple things. They don't wanna sit, you know. I mean, I really appreciate you guys, you've all just jumped on here and you've all just sat and watched a video for a you know, best part of an hour. Uh, which I guess is a bit different at night time after after nine o'clock. It's why I do it at night time, because I know most people are gonna be in. Um, and just watching Netflix or summit, uh, whereas through the day everyone wants to you know, multitask. 
you know, listen to a podcast while you're working out, listen to a podcast while you're traveling somewhere, listen to a podcast while you're walking the dog, um, whilst you're doing some work, cleaning the house, whatever. Um, audio is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, particularly with, you know, as Alexa and smart devices, you know, voice devices become more and more uh, the norm. Um, I think anyone who's who's building a business, building a brand, something on the side, maybe you're, you're supporting your acting career by doing something else completely unrelated to acting and you want to build a business around it and you want to get your brand out there, my advice would be start a podcast. Just start a podcast. You can start a podcast relatively cheaply. Bit of kit, the microphone you see in front of me here, super old now, still works fine for a podcast. Um, would cost you about 115 quid. Studio arm like this, you don't even need one, but would be about... 60 quid so if you bought two of these um you know looking at maybe i don't know 300 pounds 350 quid that's it start you you know start your podcast up um get some free editing software for your computer plug it all in these are usb mics rode microphones shout out to you they sponsor everything i do for us on this so technically give me for free but um but yeah you know even to buy wouldn't set you back very much money um but podcasting, yeah, guys, seriously, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Absolutely. Um, let's have a look. Offering value to listeners, Sharon. Yeah, you got to offer value, value, value. Um, what, what's going on here? Um, Valerie's saying, um, oh, Sharon's writing a book as well. Samantha's here. Oh, I've got loads of comments. I'll read these out in a sec. Um, how famous I have to be to get on a podcast with you? You've got to be pretty famous, basically, Bobby. So that's your challenge. Um, to get on ads on this .tv, yeah, I need you basically on primetime TV <laughs> or in a, or at least have won an Oscar. Um, but yeah, some of it worked towards, mate, definitely. Sam says, do you have any advice for people getting into television on the production behind the scenes? Maybe anything you picked up as an actor of this? Definitely, Sam. Um, what you want to do, oh, I mean, so the, the closer you can get to what I would call the sun in terms of... Um, people of influence within a production company, the better. And sometimes you're going to have to work for free, right? This is just it. And I'm a massive advocate for this. And this is quite controversial in the acting industry because sometimes people are like, oh, you know, you've got to show your worth. You've got to, you know, I think people who, who, who say that a lot of the time are really threatened by people doing things for free because they feel, oh, well, if they're going to do something for free, then I won't get paid anymore. Um, and I'm like, you need to forget that. If you're good enough, you're always going to get paid. But in order to get to know people, expand your network, get in and close to that sun, whoever that is, you know, closer to the sun, closer to the, you know, the the, the main people within that organization. Um, sometimes you've got to work free. So I would just go, listen, if you want to get into production, volunteer to be a runner on a top drama. Get If you're in Manchester, Red Production Company, I've just shot a drama with them recently called Years and Years, BBC One. Um, stars massive names like Emma Thompson, Russell Tovey, Ruth Maidley's in it. Um, I just went to a read-through for another um, drama that Red are doing called The Stranger. It's got people like Jennifer Saunders in it. I mean, again, huge names. Um, I'm sure if you reached out and said, listen, I'm just looking for some work experience as a runner to get into production and on set. Can I do a couple of days a week free for you? And I'm prepared to just do anything. They're going to be welcoming you with open arms. If you are if you go in with a with a can do attitude, you're not going to whinge, you're not going to moan about anything. You're just going to offer value, 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 and ultimately you'll make yourself indispensable. Where they're like, actually, you know what? We could really do with Sam back, and we'll pay you. If you come, we'll just pay you. And you're going to have to start off on the bottom, like all actors do. You start off on the bottom rung, and you work your way up. But that's just the way that it is. Um, and this industry is all about people. Without a doubt, people are everything. And the value you offer those people without asking really for anything in return um, can just change your life. If you just go and give people value in this industry, um, they will, um, yeah, they, they well, it's just appreciated, isn't it? And they will reciprocate. Danny Miller's just texted me. What's he saying? I bet he's like, mate, what, what are you, what's going on with the vlog? <laughs> Hopefully he was happy with it. Oh, he's been at the gym. He's been, uh, he's been spinning. Um, He's put, send me over the details and I'll tweet now, prime time. Danny, you've missed it, mate. <laughs> you've missed it. He's just come out from spinning. But that will be my advice, Sam. Get in touch with the big production companies in your area um, and just offer your services to, to do running for them, which is basically just being, you know, the helper on set, you know, brewing up, getting, you know, stuff together for people, um, you know, ultimately just doing what's asked of you and uh, and you'll just get such a good feel for for the set and who does what and how it works. Um, it's just being valuable, you know. There probably is no... I'm sure there's probably... You know, you can't learn that at uni. You can't go to school and do that. You've got to do it on the job. 
Valerie says, great to see a young actor speak his truth. I'm filming scenes with a Meisner coach on Friday to keep the enthusiasm going. Nice one, Valerie. Otherwise, easy to get despondent. Yeah, you've got to just keep going in this industry. Don't, you know, if something's not happening for you, it's why I vlog. It's why I do podcasts. It's why I do all this stuff. Because if something's not happening for me and I'm just quiet, uh, you know, I've just shot this drama. I don't have another one to go into yet. I'm working on it, but, you know, could have a few few weeks off, a couple of months off, three months off. What's the point in just sitting there waiting for the photo ring? The more you can do for yourself, the the, the happier you're going to feel. Um, uh, John says, saw an interview with him and Darren Brown. He replied to comments. It's worth reaching out. What's, what, what, who's that, John? Lewis, we were talking about when I was talking about uh, Lewis Howes. He's a good guy. I emailed him quite a bit and he always replies. Really sound bloke. Um, Bobby did a short film for free yesterday. He's helping a friend out with the competition. Everyone had a great time and was really happy to help out. Uh, there were 18 people there. Boom. Honestly, magic can happen when people get together, um, you know, and really just, you know, put value out into the world, Bobby. So good on you for that, mate. And John was was talking about Lewis. Yeah, mate, definitely. Lewis Howe's an awesome guy. Um, right. Well, uh, that's kind of it for tonight. Five to ten. Go listen to the full podcast with Danny. Tweet me and Danny. Let us know you've heard it. At Ross A. Grant, at Act on This TV. Danny is at Danny B. Miller um, on Twitter. I'll drop him a text now to tell him that he's missed the premiere. <laughs> Because he's just got back from spinning, um, and uh, and yeah, let us know what you uh, what you think of that. I'm just gonna close the comments down on Facebook because I can't end it otherwise. Um, so apologies if uh, you're writing a comment now, and I can't read it. Um, if you do need to get in touch with me urgently, you can just drop me an email, Ross at on this TV. Um, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get back to you, but I will get back to you as soon as I bloody can. Um, I do genuinely. People sometimes, I've said this loads of times, don't, don't I? But people think there's like a team here and they'll send me an email going, hi team. And I'm like, honestly, <laughs> no team. It's, just, it's literally just me. So um, so yeah, any anyone who's emails me, like I pick it up. Like I'm the only one who reads my emails. So um, I will get to it at some stage. Um, definitely. Um, what I'll end on, just um, in case people haven't seen it, is you know that two minute little video that I put together about not giving up those who are late to the party I don't know if you've seen it I've put it out on social media recently um, if you've seen it there's no i watching it again uh, but these are just my three pointers on um, what you know there's been times in my life where I want to give up like genuinely I'm just like fucking hell I just can't can't deal with this anymore like is it worth it in various things um, and there's always three questions that I ask myself in those those moments and I always go nah Definitely not giving up um, because of the answers to these questions. So I'll leave you with this. Again, like I say, you saw it in the vlog, but no, I'm watching it again. Um, it is on uh, Twitter, this, and that's on this, dot, uh, that's on this TV's Twitter account. Um, so do uh, give it a retweet if you see it. The more people we can hit with it, hopefully the more people we can stop giving up. Um, and I'll be back next week, next Monday, 9 p.m. Um, with some more shenanigans. I've no idea, to be honest with you, but do pop back and I promise you it will be uh, well worth spending the hour with me. Um, thank you to those who are listening on the audio experience. Shout out to those who are watching the replay on Facebook um, or who got their email to their email late and they clicked on the link and they're watching the replay. Appreciate you being here as well. Um, and uh, yeah, awesome. Have a fantastic week, guys. Until next time, bye for now. Is it time for me to give up? A question I get asked by actors a dozen times a week or more, and I totally get it, right? You're at that point where you feel enough is enough. You can't take it. You're tired. The opposition and the obstacles in your way have finally worn you down. I've been there myself, and if any actor watching this says they haven't, they are lying. So what's the answer? It's not a straightforward yes or no, but asking yourself these three questions will give you more clarity. One, why did you pursue acting in the first place? right you had a good reason for committing to this goal initially what was it what things did you want to get from this industry odds are you still want those things as much as you did before if you push through the discomfort you're feeling right now and eventually acquire those things will it have all been worth it two what's the worst that will happen if you keep going and don't reach your goal honestly what are you afraid of for most people is being judged a failure by other people around them what if I put in another 10 years and still don't make it you need to value your own opinion of yourself above the combined opinion of everyone else if you don't keep going you'll never know how far you could have gone and you'll miss out on being the person you'd become through the sheer effort of carrying on Three, what would you tell someone else 
in your shoes? Would you tell your talented best friend to throw the towel in or would you help them see in their amazing potential and their one and only stab at this thing that we call life? As cheesy as it sounds, you need to be your own best friend right now. You, more than anyone in the world, deserve your belief and motivation. So if you answer these three questions honestly and still feel resolute about the decision to give up, you have my blessing to abandon your goal. But please remember, you are going to die. Unlike an acting gig, there are no rehearsals here. You will wake up and be 92 one day and it will be too late to do this. So don't die with regret. In my own career, I'll give up when I am where I want to be and not a second before.